Steve, Rotary has recently added supporting the environment as a new area of focus. We have then seen a sense of urgency from Rotaractors and Rotarians worldwide rushing to get involved. I've always been fascinated by how positive peace can trigger a better environment outcome and vice versa. Can you explain how both peace and the environment interlink with one another? So what I'd like to say, like we recently produced an ecological threat report and what blew me away, the countries with the worst ecological degradation are also some of the most violent in the world. So, for example, if we looked at the 15 countries facing the most ecological threats, 11 of them are currently conflict zones. And so... If we look at this now and we dig deeper, and I'll use probably the Sahel in Africa, that just sits at the northern end of sub-Saharan Africa uh, under, uh, uh, yeah, under Morocco. And now if we look at that area of the world, it's suffering uh, uh, from probably the most systemic threats. And it's also uh, 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 the epicentre of, the, some, of the, some of the weakest states in the world. If, of the 10 countries there, there's been eight revolutions or attempted coups in the last uh, 18 months. So when we look at these countries have massive population growth, uh, uh, over 90% population growth are projected for the next 30 years. Niger at 161 is the biggest. They lack food, so they lack water. And the offshoot of lacking waters, they lack food. But very, very weak central go governments and the, the governments haven't got the ability to be able to project a, a rule of law. And so you've got a lot of terrorism, mainly along the borders of the countries, and that's because the government's lack of projection, very, very little business environments, huge numbers of refugees. And so all of this goes together. So when we look at positive peace, and we use the expression optimal environment to hum create human potential to flourish, what happens is, the eight pillars come together systemically and they all feed off each other. So you've got well-functioning government, a strong business environment, a high levels of human capital, free flow of information, low levels of corruption to name four of the eight. And so all these and the other four, they all interact together. So the countries which are strong in positive peace, therefore are wealthier. If you're a wealthier country, you're more likely to be able to provide the services to be able to capture the water needed to produce the food which you need. We also find that the countries which are highest in positive peace, the more developed countries, therefore they've got lower birth rates, therefore they're more sustainable. And again, this brings us back to the environment. Uh, there's the, because the environment's not as overstretched, and this is not that we don't have to focus on the environment in the developed countries, but it's nowhere near as overstretched as a lot of the less developed countries. It also means that if they haven't got the money to, uh, if they haven't got the ability to grow their own food, let's say like Singapore, they've got the ability to have the industries which get, garner the exports to get the money to purchase the food and bring it in. And so the whole thing's systemic in the way it comes together. And that's why you see the countries which are high in positive peace performing much, much better in terms of their performance on the ecology. So Rotary jumped into um, adding the environment as an area of focus three, four years ago. And I had the opportunity to, to sit on the working group, the task force that was looking into whether we wanted the environment to be a standalone area of focus for Rotary or whether we wanted to wind it into the existing six areas that we had. And as we did the research on it, we started to be able to carve out looking at global grants that we had been doing in our, our areas of focus. And what we realized was that more than $18 million of grants that had gone out recently had some application to the environment. And so it started to tell a different kind of story about how Rotarians were already doing things uh, for the environment. And it really made a solid case to saying this needs to be a standalone, a standalone area. And one of the things that I love about it is that um, it has engaged 
so many different members in a different kind of way, particularly our rotor actors um, have jumped right into, um, into the environment. One of the things that we, we talked about, and, and it was a bit of a challenge in the conversation as we were uh, discussing about, about this area, was the, the terms um, climate change, for example, and how those two words can be very politically charged. And, and you know, as a, non, um, a non-religious, non-political organization, you know, we try to, we try to walk um, a fine line to, to not be political. But at the end of the day, doing the right thing for our planet is not political. We, we, we don't have a planet B, we only have a planet A, and we need to treat her well. And so I am just so heartened by the the kind of things that Rotarians and Rotaractors, Rotary members are doing around the world. Anything as simple as removing plastics from our waterways to cleaning up streets and roadways to, um, you know, har- har- harnessing uh, water um, and using it in, in more um, environmentally friendly ways. There's there's no there's no shortage of ideas of what people can do, and it comes back to that thought of the power of one. Just one little change, one little change. My niece, ten uh, year old niece, started collecting um, the caps off of coffee cups, um, the plastic caps, and she found someone who now turns them into another kind of product and repurposes them. And and you know, the fact that she's ten and that speaks to her. I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's an an opportunity for every one of us to play some little part. It doesn't have to be big, but if we all do something, then we can change, um, we can change everything. 